I hear this constantly from creationists. A hundred years ago, we believed blacks were inferior to whites. Two hundred years ago, we believed the man would never fly. Five hundred years ago, we believed the sun revolved around the earth. How can we be sure about anything or trust science if it's always changing? These statements show a serious lack of understanding about science and understanding, and because of this, things that sound highly logical but have a faulty premise are accepted as equally accurate as science even though they have zero empirical evidence. The evolution of science has always been a never-ending journey from the first time someone looked up at the stars and wondered what they were. In the beginning of human knowledge, much of reality was very fuzzy, and anyone's guess was probably as good as another. Science at this time was just observation, and many times religion or spirits were used to explain why. With our fuzzy view of reality and the artistic nature of our mind, anthropomorphizing reality made as much sense as any other explanation. It's like putting on a lens with a picture taped on it. It's not the picture, but it looks like it is to the viewer. When logic was introduced and perfected by the philosophers, many great ideas with much error, but a tiny bit of truth was postulated. At this point, a branch of observable and testable observations began to replace the reliance on just logic or superstition. Many early scientists made great observations. They were limited, however, by the technology of their time and the accuracy or observability of their experiments. Moore's Law is a prediction that computers will double in speed and capacity every 18 months, and so far the reality has been very close to this. However, the overarching concept of Moore's Law is that because of the previous generation's technology acting as a layer of scaffolding and infrastructure, the next generation's technology will be much better, and the progress of the technology will move at an exponential rate. Science is an agnostic practice. Science can never be 100% accurate, but it can determine the varying degrees of probability of the theory being an accurate model based on observability and predictability. As we continue building on the scaffolding of past discoveries and using our past technology, our accuracy about reality can become that much more certain. Never completely certain, but more certain than it was before. Think about it like we are all nearly blind, looking at a picture. Also imagine that the picture holds the keys to making glasses. Here we are at the beginning of science. It looks like a bunch of blobs, and we can make no predictions about what it is. Anyone's guess is as good as the next person's. However, a scientist would observe what the picture is and claim they don't know what the picture is supposed to be. A Gnostic person would claim they know for certain what it is, perhaps a message from God or some secret text that has some hidden meaning that contains immortality if studied enough. As science and new technology increases the accuracy of our vision of reality, mostly from trial and error at this stage, the picture becomes clearer. We now can make observations about what we see that we can use to extrapolate real understanding. It is still fuzzy. A scientist would note the shapes and forms. A Gnostic person may hold to their past beliefs and look away or reject some of their past beliefs only if it's more convenient to do so. As we build off of our last discoveries, the picture continues to get clearer, but there are still little details we can't make out. So we continue to improve the lens of our reality, and the smaller things become clearer too. Evolution is at this stage. We can see it. It is clear. There is no debate about it, except by people who are not in the field. Just like the heliocentric model, we started out with this picture, fuzzy. Galileo, Copernicus, Kepler made their observations, defogging the lens of reality for us. We gained better telescopes than satellites. Now we have satellites able to detect extrasolar planets. As the next wave of tech improves, we may even be able to map them from home. In regards to evolution, Linnaeus and Lamarck identified the variations outside and inside a species. This presented a problem from their observations. Darwin and Mendel made it a bit less fuzzy. Watson and Crick took the clarity to the next level, and from these discoveries and technology, we will continue to build upon the tech to make these outlying minor issues even more clear. Moore's Law predicts our continued levels of accuracy as we move forward. Nothing will change the basic overlying theories that we have. 
Only people who don't understand these theories will dispute them. What will change is the clarity of the aspects of these theories, and once they are well explained, we will move on to looking into details of aspects of these new theories, explaining aspects of the larger theories we couldn't do before. Even our techniques are part of Moore's Law, with both measuring techniques and control techniques. Prior to psychology, human bias was not well known. Double-blind testing in large control groups increased accuracy significantly. The peer review process is evolving as well to increase accuracy. As we discover more, our controls will get even more strict and accurate, increasing the fine adjust of the lens of reality, but we have the course adjust at just the right level. Fields like abiogenesis and quantum physics are still fuzzy to us, but they will become clearer as time progresses and our technology picks up. Fields like the cause of the Big Bang and what was before it may never be explained, or it may be when our technology is exponentially higher. Science is not a random guess, though how it is applied can sometimes be, which is why it's so confusing to people. Diagnostics can vary from doctor to doctor. This is a small sample group and study, and if you had enough money to get a high sample group of doctors to diagnose you, the accuracy level would increase. Sadly, we are limited by funds and resources, and many tests overdone can cause their own side effects, so a doctor has to do the best she can with the information the patient has the money to get tested for. Running extra tests that don't really help, of course, makes the hospital more money, so many of these occur too. Science is never evil. When used correctly, it is the closest thing to accurate you will ever get. The politics of science can be evil when used in application, however, but the long-term science will continue to clear up the fuzzy concepts that we have. Even if despite all odds we did find out there was a god in the fuzzy areas of reality, it will not be the god that the Bible literalists believe in. Finding a god in the fuzzy parts of the picture of reality would not negate the science that we have. Evolution, comma, descent, the age of the earth, the big bang, cosmology, neurology, these parts are so clear at this point that unless this deity spent all of his time trying to trick us about all this stuff and planting false evidence, the sciences we have have a ridiculously higher probability of being true. And would you really want to worship a trickster god who sent you to hell if you fell for his trap and rewarded those who believed whatever they felt was true in spite of what all the evidence said? I think not.